summer, Fox 25 Morning News anchor Kim Carrigan had been co-anchoring the show with Jean LaVanchi since 2004. But on the morning of January 3rd of this year, she was called to the boss's office and told that was her last day. Prior to Fox, Kim worked at WHGH for seven years and at WBZ for three before that. And Kim Carrigan is here. Welcome, Kim. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Well, you're a veteran of these wars. I mean, you know, this has happened to you before. <laughs> it never makes it easy. That no, is I for sure. That you know, I think too. all of us know yeah. that. But I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a rough business. But I mean, what do they say to you? Well, I tell you, uh, it was you know as it was printed in the papers two weeks ago. But uh, my contract was not renewed. Um, I was called in that morning. We, I actually had an open window, and I was called in uh, on the 3rd and told that they had decided that they would exercise the option and would not pick up uh, the rest of the contract. And originally, that would expire on the 17th, so really yesterday would have mm -hmm. been my last day. And uh, they would like, at that point, they said, for me to stay and to do the two weeks. So I agreed that I would and left and then later that evening I got a call from the uh, news director saying that actually uh, it would be best if he didn't come back. I think it would be best for all parties concerned. But I mean, what, what, what reason do they tell you? They, well, they don't tell you anything. They, they never tell you the truth. They didn't. And, and, and honestly, they, they didn't. I, I have my my ideas about Money, what occurred there. What? Well, I think you know. First off, I, 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 the ratings You're were not as <laughs> well. Thank you very much. The ratings were not as great as, yeah. as they could have been, or as great as they were. We mm -hmm. certainly had a strong and terrific show for a lot of years, uh, and it went to five and a half hours. Yeah. And these were decisions that were made above Kim Carrigan. And decisions that I don't think sat so well with the viewers. And when ratings start to slip, then decisions are made and changes are made. And I think that really the decision about Kim Kerrigan was based on decisions being made to shake up the show and to change it so that ratings are better. I mean, do you feel comfortable talking about some of the things that went on there? I mean, we've, we've heard rumors over the years that... Uh, I mean, that even the people that are in charge, I had, to, I had to look up the name of the news director. I mean, I used to know everybody in Tripoli. I, right. I couldn't even tell you who it is, McGonagall or something, mm -hmm. Paul? Paul McGonagall. Mm -hmm. I mean, do they make the decisions, or is it made at a corporate level? Or, mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you, it, the interesting thing about uh, working at Fox 25, which was very different from any shop that I've ever worked in before, is that you really didn't know where the decisions were being made. It was sort of a curtain, uh, almost like Oz. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if those decisions were being made in that building or if they're being made in a building outside of the city. Uh, so that made it somewhat difficult because it was never really clear why decisions were being made. And I think those who work there right now would tell you the same thing. Was there an editorial spin or control in any sense of the way? Did there, there something... Th things that they wanted you to drift toward? Well, I didn't really get that sense. Um, in fact, I think of all the shops I've ever worked in, this one was probably uh, more liberal and open about those kinds of issues. Uh, they allowed us to sort of be who we wanted to be, especially on that morning show. Yeah, sure. um, but, I, but I think that, that uh, one of the worst decisions that was made associated with the show was taking it to five and a half hours. Yeah. Um, and this was not just here in, in Boston. This was a corporate decision. Uh, they're doing it in Philadelphia and Chicago and New York and all across the country. The difference, I believe, is that they were doing it with the same core anchor team here in Boston versus maybe bringing in some other faces, voices. Like they do on a Today ideas. Show or something like Correct. that. Correct, yeah. Well, you told the Herald, I think it was, through your agent, that you felt beaten up every day. Well, my my agent said that uh, they were critical, and they were critical. Like they what? were critical of me, but I wasn't the only person they were critical of. When the ratings start to slip, they become critical of everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, we lost our executive producer, for example, the heart and soul of the show for so many years, Andy Sugg. Uh, he was let go in August, and, and slowly but surely, they started to peel people off behind the scenes, which is so important for a huge show like that one. Uh, so I, I certainly wasn't the only person they were critical of. Uh, it was happening to but everybody. What were they in, in critical in what way? Well, with a show like that one, you know, there's a lot of ad lib, there's a lot of interviews, there's there's a, a lot of uh, a lot of reading, and uh, they were just critical about maybe some of the choices of interviews that we were putting into the show and some of the subject matters that we were talking about on the air. It just became critical about a lot of things like so that. So there was sort of a negative. Kind of unfortunately, unfortunately, and and you know the tough part 
uh, for that show is that it's an ensemble show. So it's so much about the personalities and the people who are involved in the decision making and trusting one another when you get on the air. Uh, so to have outside influences trying to change it and shake it up and move it around, uh, it, it made it tough. Yeah. It really I mean, did. It, it's, it is a popular show. I mean, a lot of people watch it, but I mean, the signature show is still the 10 o'clock. But they had trouble launching an earlier show. I think it was six o'clock, right? Right, and right. That didn't go anywhere. No, there's. That, Did they that, cancel that? No, that now? show still exists. Is Maria Stefano still doing it? Yes, she is, and uh, and it, it has. It's had a very difficult time getting off the ground, and they have an eleven o'clock, uh, which has which done is also. You know, something of a dud. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, you know, it's tough. It's tough. You know, you and I understand this marketplace, and there, people in this marketplace love their their. They're anchors, they know the people that they trust and the stations that they know and trust. And in some of those hours, like 6 p.m. and 11 p.m., they're going to turn to those stations that have been tried and true for a long time and people that they know. Even though they, Maria Stefanos is very popular, her slot is 10. So they still haven't been able to turn people right. around to that. Yeah, I think that's absolutely right. Now, wh tough. what about you? I mean, do you want to stay in Boston? Do you, I know you turned down something in I the did. fall. In a I did. I did. I turned down a fantastic offer uh, in the fall. It was an evening position in a major market. I did so because this is home. This is home for my children. This is home for me. I've worked in this marketplace for 17 years. I have a lot invested here. Mm -hmm. uh, so my hope is that I stay here and that uh, I stay on TV here. I certainly would like to. Uh, the audience has been so good to me through the years, Emily. I, they really have. They've been so supportive. And in the last two weeks, the, the outpouring of support has been phenomenal. It really has. So I'd like to stay on the air here. Did, did your honesty hurt you at all? <laughs> I uh, should talk. You, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, no, I'm speaking to you. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, I think sometimes it probably does. Sometimes it does. That's my Midwestern roots. You know, I can't help it. Um, one, one thing that I loved about doing that morning show was that it took me out outside of the box. I had always just been a newsreader. Mm -hmm. And it took me outside the box and it gave me an opportunity to sort of show who I am. Uh, and I think that has been a good thing for me in a lot of ways. But for some people, maybe that's too honest. Maybe that's too out there. Maybe that's too Midwestern. I don't know. I hope not. I hope it not. might be hard to go back to kind of a standard news reading thing. I mean, this well, is one of the beauties of this show is it's not. It's yeah, not. right. I, I mean, uh, the thing about uh, me is that I just love news. I'm a news junkie. You know, I've been on CNN and here and all these other stations since I left to, to keep up at an important time with the political season going on. So uh, I, I think I can readjust and go back. There was always a question when I went to the morning show, uh, would my, my ability, would I have the ability to go there and to do that kind of show? And I think I proved that I certainly mm -hmm. Could, uh, could make that transition, and I know I could certainly transition back in yeah. some way. I mean, uh, other people have done it, Katie Couric sure. among them. So Absolutely. Once you've got it, you've got it. All right. Kim Kerrigan, good luck. Thanks. Thanks Keep for having posted. me on. Yeah. I so much appreciate it. It's great to see you. Good to see you. All right. Let me continue. Everything you've ever wanted to know about the British monarchy, all in one book about Queen Elizabeth II.